Anybody here know who Jezebel was? Jezebel? She was evil, correct. Uh, you, you look at the progression there, that there, it's actually uh, telling for our times. What happened? There were kings of the 10 tribes, and uh, they, weren't, they weren't so good. We went through a few of them. Yeravam, his son Nadav, and then Basha, and uh, whose son? Uh, Elah bin Basha. Those are the first four kings of the 10 tribes. And then there was a little bit of an assassination again. Zimri killed him. Tivni ben Ginat were fighting over the throne with Omri. Omri took power. He was popular, apparently. So I wanted Omri. That's how he even became a candidate. You know, he was, he was the people's choice. And this Omri, it says, was worse than all who came before him. And then it says even, even more so, his son Ahab was even worse. And what does it say about Ahab? That he married this woman by Kahisha. Took a, he took a wife, and his wife was certainly no good. It was Ethbal, king of the Sidonians. Now, uh, it seems the way the Navi says it is that one of the, this was what made him worse than everybody else, his wife. All the other kings of Israel, we don't hear about their wives. They're unmentioned. We know that Yeruvam had a wife. Apparently, he was, a, he, was a, he was not a polygamist. Doesn't say anything about multiple wives, and his 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 wife was always at his side, basically, and he was, she was the one he had to send because uh, he needed to contact the navi. Why did he go to the navi himself? Because probably he's too ashamed, whatever it was. But this Jezebel seemed to have been the problem that that led him uh, that made Ahab much worse. Why she brought in the Baal worship? Her own father's name has the word Baal in it, Eth Baal, meaning man of the man of the Baal. So that's what he. Her well, name comes from a well, Izevel, yeah, but it, it could be that her name uh, is just like Kushan Rishasayim and Antiochus Epimenes. We changed the name to make it sound worse. Yeah. I heard the Izevel is like, yeah, instead of Baal. Baal. Yeah, or Bosheth. Sometimes when they used to mm -hmm. use Baal in the name, they added Bosheth. So obviously her name is, is, is sorry, it, her name is obviously something wrong with it, perhaps also corrupted. To you know, to just stick it to her. So she was basically a. Uh, uh, she represented this cosmopolitan mindset. The ten tribes are already being distanced from the temple, and then Ahab, uh, as part of his securing, uh, I guess diplomatic uh, marriages. Don't forget, he also has one with King Jehoshaphat that we discussed earlier this month. So Jezebel represents good relations with the Phoenicians. Now we're going to get along with them. So she in. A worship which is common elsewhere. You know, worshiping Baal. That's that's what that's what you do. But the funny thing is that initially hers could have been seen as let's say the Israelites opening themselves up to other cultures. No, now we're open to this type of thing. Our own king's son, the future king, is actually married to a, a, a princess of the Canaanim. The first one we've we've heard about ever. It used to be Jews made war on the Canaanim and tried to conquer them. And now it seems they're getting along with them, just like David made a made a, an alliance with Hiram, the king of Tzor, Tyre, which is just along the coast with Sidon. So they're continuing it now that now by marriage. And what happened? This woman, it turns out, became a religious fanatic. It wasn't about being uh, also involving Baal worship. What did she do about the true worshippers of, of God? The real Nevi'im. It doesn't even say this in introduction to how bad Ahav was. It says Ahav was bad and did this. Does it say Ahav killed anybody? No, we only read about it in the next parak when Elionavi has to come back He's been hiding for three years, and he goes to this Ovadia, who's in charge of Ahab's house, and it says, Ovadia, at the time that uh, Jezebel was what? Cutting off all of God's prophets. Okay? You, you read about this? It says she was basically massacring them. So Ahab, uh, so Ovadia hit 100 prophets, 50 in each cave, it says. Mm -hmm. So this, this woman who represented, let's say, you know, tolerance, other cultures, we're, we're just going to, us, we Israelites are going to show that we're accepting of other ways of re religion and worship. She ended up becoming the biggest religious fanatic of her time and basically killing everybody. Uh, so shows that how pro uh, tolerant they were. So I would say that killing prophets and priests and molech would be saving lives, by the way. Normally, don't, we're, not, we're not so murderous, but sometimes you do have these murderous cults, right? So you have to do something about it. So... One of the things is that, did you think that Ahav or Ezebel actually killed any of these prophets themselves? Yeah. So every regime, here's, here's something that we have to watch out. Every re regime has its foot soldiers. Uh, think about uh, the Goldhagen book, Hitler's Willing Executioners. Could Hitler have acted alone? 
No, he had he had millions of of, of uh, collaborators and conspirators and people who are just willing to go and do what needs to be done. Every tyrannical regime relies on their police, the thugs, their KGB, their military to enforce their policies. And if it wasn't for these masses of people who are willing to become cogs in this terrible machine, these regimes wouldn't be able to succeed at what they're doing. I'll give you an example. A healthy society doesn't produce little Eichmanns, little kill robots. Shaul, when Shaul gave the orders to kill the Kohanim and Nov, what happened? Uh, nobody wanted to do it. No one wanted to do it. Saul's men were all there. They're all armed. Abner didn't want to do it. Uh, all of his loyal men. We will not do such a thing. So who did it for him? Doeg. Doeg. What was Doeg? What was Doeg? What was Doeg? And Adumi. Doeg was an Edomite, apparently a convert to Judaism, but not a native Jew. Why? We only couldn't find any native Jews who were willing to do such a thing. We don't want to become the enforcers of a people who did not kill any of the prophets. That was his wife's doing. Ahab was a lot more neutral. Rabbi Victor Miller wrote about this himself. Ezebel is the one who's blamed for this. So why isn't it mentioned, by the way, Ahab was killing loyal servants of God? Because it wasn't Ahab doing it all. When it introduces us to how bad Ahab was, yes, he introduced Baal worship, and he did intermarry. He did not go around killing people. It was Ezebel. And because the Book of Kings doesn't tell you, and so-and-so, she reigned, whatever. We don't have any women who reign. It's only at a certain point in the story that they tell us, by the way, Ezebel was doing this. I believe that it was Ezebel's foreigners, Canaanim, Sidonians, who were the ones who were, who were basically persecuting the prophets. It wasn't Jews who were doing it. Now, this means we have to watch out. Uh, you know that converts and BTs tend to extremism. We've talked about this before. The Ramba mentions this. So uh, you have to watch out. You don't want to be part of this. Any, any regime relies on the... I remember hearing, I'll quote uh, Dr. Peterson again. He says, you should administer IQ tests. And remember the highest IQ test people, what the people with the highest IQs, what do they become? Anybody know? Math and physics professors, right? And the slightly lower IQs are, you know, other other professors of STEM things. And they get to the all he says, and if you're just hovering above, uh, I think 100 or just below, you have uh, menial jobs. Certain police officers have that. Many, many things in law enforcement require more of a robotic mindset and not what they call in Hebrew, Rosh Gadol. If, you know that expression. Rosh Katan means just follow your orders. Don't don't try to be whatever. I think it's sort of surprising here. The Rosh Kola, I think, is realizing that I'm trying to be Rosh Gadol in these types of things. I made an executive decision what to do with you know the, the food tonight and the food in the refrigerator. And he was quite surprised that I did such a thing. Like I don't think anybody's ever done that to him. You know. And I said, no, we're, we're gonna. Here's how the food's going to be served and all that and the food supply. He was very surprised because then he realized, oh, this is a good idea. Nor the problem is he just assumed everybody's just following orders. And this time I decided to just go and do it myself. And he was sort of offended, but then he realized, ah, oh, this was actually a good idea. Oh, you, thank you for thinking ahead. So you don't want people like that in your regime. You need people who are willing to just kill. And that's a problem. And by the way, what did Jezebel do with the ultimately? So this is a woman who, over the course of about 20 years, started running the thing, running the show in the 10 tribes. What was the last act of corruption she did in her husband's reign? Anybody know? And how do you, how would you put it together? Very fitting for today. Remember, Jezebel is the foreign influence in Israel. Jezebel brings in foreign worship. Jezebel brings in bloodshed. Okay. What is the last thing she did? And this is very funny. I, I you read this in the Navi, and I also like the way Rabbi Victor Miller put it. Achav wanted property. He was jealous of apparently his cousin's vineyard. Where was Achav's capital? Come on, what city? What was their capital back then? Samaria, the city of Shomron was their capital. But where was Akav's ancestral family? In the Jezreel Valley. Valley. Okay. Navoth Israeli is apparently his cousin, at least according to many understandings of Hazal. So Ahab told his relation, Navoth, you know, I really want your vineyard for whatever reason. I need that property, eminent domain, whatever it is. And Navoth's response was, Chas Shalom, I would give you my ancestral land. Yeah, okay. But I didn't think he said it like that, but he just says, I can't, you know, your majesty, I cannot do such a thing. So Achav was really upset. You know why? Because there's nothing he could do. Halakhically speaking, the law of the land, as enforced by the courts, was the law of the Torah. Mm -hmm. And the Torah does not give the king the right to 
take someone's property. And by the way, Ahab was, was guilty of the sin of lo sis ave and lo sachmot. First, he felt that he wanted the other person's property, and they actually went and tried to get it from him. Uh, that's what we said before. What's lo sachmot? The issue of lo sachmot is your friend has a nice car. So you want a, if you want a car and you can go and get a car just like your friend, that's fine. If you want your friend's car and try to and then you go and offer him some money, I'd really like your car, give it to me. So that's Losach mode. Even if he accepts, by the way, make him a nice offer, twice its value, and he's happy, you still did the sin of Losach mode. So yeah, even if even yeah. You know, I use the example of car. If you go and get the same exact car from the dealer as he did, you know, oh, that guy's a Tesla. I'll go get a Tesla. So that's that that's that's nothing wrong because you just wanted similar. Uh, he has pizza. I also would eat pizza. That's fine. If you want his pizza, that's losis ave. If you go and let him know about it and say that you're willing to do something to get his pizza, that's los achmon. Okay. So don't do that. Rabbi Bronspiel taught us this. He said there are these people who drive around his neighborhood in Muncie or in Borough Park, and they say, "Oh, nice house," and they knock on the door and say, "Hey, we want to buy the house. I'll offer you what do you want? Three million, four million dollars? Make your offer." So even if the, the the homeowners are very happy, like wow, I never thought that someone just offered me millions of dollars for my five hundred thousand dollar house. You can't do that. That's low sach mode. You perhaps should look what house is available. If you really want a nice house, don't just go to someone. Hey, I want your house. Give it to me. See what's available. Hmm. Okay, that that's what he did. So Achav was guilty of that. Achav could not, by any you know legitimate means, get his hands on Navoth's what vineyard. So it really put him, it made him depressed. It says he, he fell into depression. He was stuck in bed, not eating. Man, you can, you can understand the guys like uh, how corrupt, how, how wrong his mitos were that you're king. So no one's not selling your field, his vineyard. Can you just do something else? But you have to go, go get depressed about it. Izevel found him and was wondering about this. So what was, what what'd she, what'd she asked him? Like, well, why, what's up? You're not even eating. And he told him a story. So she said, aren't you supposed to be king around here? I'll show you how to, you know, how, what we do where I come from. So she used the justice system against Navot. She found some, yeah, no, she, she just said like it's not even blackmail. She Wait, didn't frame. she didn't try to she did not try to blackmail Navoth into doing it or extort it from Navot. She she didn't try to trick him. She found false witnesses to testify that Navoth committed the high crimes of cursing God and cursing the king. So that he would be put to death by Torah law. Mm -hmm. And that's what she found. Basically, what, it, what what is she doing? She is corrupting the judicial system, the justice system. Don't forget, up until that point, like Akhav said, it's he can't touch it. He's a Melech Yisrael. He's really not even supposed to be doing this, because I'll eventually said, Takana, Melech Yisrael are not involved in justice at all. We don't put them on trial. We don't let them testify. We don't let them act as judges. Melech Yehuda, that's Melech based of it, can't, because they're legitimate and they're honest. That's what God wants them to do. So she took the, the justice system and used it to kill an innocent man. So that, by the way, his property could be seized by her husband, the king. So I guess that just to know that first you have um, the, the nation of Israel go off the derech by being disconnected from Yerushalayim, going up to the temple. That's the first step. And then bring in foreign influences and intermarriage and you know, uh, like what goes on in Tel Aviv. Now they, they, they celebrate things like Halloween and, and, and uh, January 1st, right? And Valentine's Day. These are all things that, you know, that, that's the ball of, of today. And then they corrupt the justice system. And then they say that, you know, actually a minor tweak to the justice system so that perhaps it would actually do justice and not allow, allow let's say, people convicted on the, their own testimony derived through torture should be sitting in jail for the rest of their lives. That's a terrible thing. You have to be afraid of the Supreme Court only because of what the Supreme Court could do to you. You should be very much afraid. So you want to fix this type of thing. No, this system, this corrupt justice system must remain. So by the way, that's uh, there's nothing new under the sun. We see this there. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. If you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Israel or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.